there is a conversation going on at present in our mentor program alumni forum and it revolves around the notion of trading difficulties and these are not the difficulties in picking trades these are not the difficulties in picking exits and the like these are the difficulties that are psychological in nature they are the habits and ideas that people have generally picked up subconsciously and they revolve around their money scripts as you would expect that they might be subtle lessons they picked up from things their parents said in passing things such as that well, rich people only got there by stealing or rich people are greedy but one of the things i have noted is that a lot of the issues that people have not only come from these ideas that they might have picked up in childhood but they come from their job you see one of the issues with trading is that we arrive at trading fully formed nobody picks up a trader at five years old like an apprentice shaolin monk and then trains them for the rest of their lives with the appropriate psychology emotional balance techniques and the like you generally come to trading later in life where you've had exposure to the workforce you've had exposure to other people in the workforce you've had exposure to the culture that drives the workforce and these are things like you are rewarded for effort well actually in trading you're not trading is sometimes almost the complete reverse in that you're rewarded for doing nothing if I have a profitable position and I just leave it and let it sit I'm being rewarded for doing nothing this runs completely contrary to what society says I should be doing society says I should be working a given number of hours and in many ways this is why people move towards the notion of short-term trading because what they're trying to do subconsciously is replace one job with another, another job and they're seeking to find some sort of balance in doing so now that's a notion they've got from the culture of the workplace and reading through people's postings it made me reminisce and think about my jobs and think about what things I might have picked up but intriguingly I, I took a different tack the, the tack I took was one of what are positive things that I've picked up what are things that might have been useful now granted some of my past careers have enabled me to engage in my curiosity and my desire to research things and solve problems but the problem with that is it often leads you simply down rabbit holes that are nothing more than blind ends and one of the things with trading is that most of the investigation most of the mucking around you do with systems is utterly pointless it leads nowhere it's very good for passing time and it's very good for occupying the day and making you feel a little bit clever but it doesn't actually do anything productive and by productive i mean it doesn't add anything to the trading process you don't all of a sudden have a revelation in excel most of the times that you can apply to your trading system and you are instantly more profitable or you've instantly removed some of the friction in the trading process that's quite rare but in, in, in sort of cataloging my jobs over deep time one of the things I did note was that one of the things I picked up a very 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 long time ago was the notion of emotional detachment from a situation that was stressful and I actually picked this up working doors as a bouncer when you work doors as a bouncer you generally work as a pair and I was generally paired with someone who was same size same age same experience as me and occasionally you would get to work with an islander who was the size of an Easter Island statue and so it was a well-worn routine and we had a night once where I was working at the Pier Hotel in Frankston now for those of you who live in Victoria you'll know what a shithole it was in fact if you looked up Pier Hotel in Frankston in the dictionary it would simply say see shithole if you looked up the sort of person that went to the Pier Hotel in Frankston on a Saturday night it would say see drunken bogan loser so it gives you some idea of the sort of place it was and it was never a place I actually enjoyed working at but 
it was exceptionally good for observing people. What One of the things about bouncing is that it is wonderful as a form of social anthropology. You get to watch people in various situations and see how they respond. And you get to understand why most people's lives are like they are. So that when you go places and you wonder why people haven't moved on, why they, why they haven't achieved more, why they haven't done more, you have an instant answer. You, you know already why that is. But there was one particular night I was working, one particular Saturday night, and I was paired with this fellow who, well, I'm not certain what the politically correct way of putting it is, is that he was about as macho as Liberace. And I thought, Christ, oh, it's going to be one of those nights, I'm going to get hurt. But you try and make the best of it. And eventually, as it did, he kicked off near the door, as it always does. And the gentile I was working with wandered over and I thought, oh God, we're both going to get killed, I better follow him. And he did something interesting that I'd not seen. Uh, anyone of a given vintage will know how bouncers operate, and particularly in these sorts of environments. And they will know that more often than not, that they make a confrontation worse. And they generally wander over and go, hey, dickhead, don't do that again, or else. And the or else is not very far behind. And so they invigorate the confrontation. They don't actually settle it down. This fellow did something very interesting. He had the ability to take the sting out of the confrontation between people. And he did it in a way that was intriguing. And the way he did it was, he withdrew himself from the confrontation. He was not part of it. He was actually part of the solution. He wasn't part of the problem. And he was able to de-escalate things dramatically. And he simply had this manner and as I noticed him over that night and several others, it dawned on me that it was that fact that he withdrew himself from the confrontation. He didn't engage in the confrontation. If anything, he was a little bit like oil on water. He just floated above the top of it. And I thought, well, there's something to be learnt from that. And it is to downregulate yourself. One of the things that... Uh, people who've played sport, who've had sort of serious accidents, been involved in combative endeavours, notice is that when these things occur, you get a physiological response. And it's very hard to control the physiological response. You simply get used to it. But the problem with the physiological response is it makes you stupid. But it also makes you revert to base programming. And base programming often makes things worse when in actual fact what you should be doing is aiming for a higher level of function and trying to withdraw yourself from the situation. So you can see instantly the applicability of this to trading. And I'll give you an example from yesterday. I have a portfolio that, are pre that at present is heavily weighted towards speculative miners and uranium stocks. And yesterday they took an absolute caning. And when I looked at them, I was concerned but not worried. Now, the two are different. Pe people confuse concern and worry. Concern to me is an intellectual observation that things are not going the way one might hope. Worry is an emotional engagement in the problem. And once you begin to worry, you begin to get stupid and you do silly things. The trick is to disengage. It is to step back from the market completely so that it has no emotional impact upon you because the moment it has an emotional impact upon you, your IQ halves and you are prone to do something silly. What you're actually prone to do is to take some sort of action that removes that emotional stress. Now, in the situation I had yesterday, what someone else might have done is simply sold all their positions and gone, well, that's it. I'm out. I can't handle that anymore. But as I had a quick check of them just before. Strangely enough, they're starting to recover because that's what the system allows for. This particular system allows for these very large swings, these very large amplitude moves, because it's trading a shitty end of the market, so you have to expect that. But it is only the capacity to remove oneself. And you see this all the time in professionals who train to do this. Uh, 
Paramedics train to do this. They train to remove themselves so they can still function. They are inoculated against the stress. Soldiers do the same thing. They are inoculated against the stress. Pilots spend countless hours in simulators so that when and if something does uh, very distressingly go wrong, there is no emotional involvement in the problem solving. It is simply concern, go through the checklist. So, so my challenge to you is to look back over your past history and find examples of where you made a problem worse because you became part of the problem. You became part of the engagement and therefore amped it up. But it is also aligned with a second thing I'd like you to do. And that is to find ways, mechanisms, and think about the notion of simply removing yourself from the confrontation that is the market. But even that's incorrect, I think. Because as I said before, you're not having a confrontation with the market. You're having a confrontation with yourself. And unfortunately, you're your worst enemy, as the old saying goes, because you know all the tricks in the book to lie to yourself. And the lies we tell ourselves are the most effective and the most powerful because we know ourselves. So your job is to find situations where that has occurred and take note of how you could have done it differently. And in particular, take note of how you react to the market and how in the future you might actually react in a different manner, in a manner that takes the sting out of what's happening so that there is not this emotional engagement, not this emotional intensity, and you don't run off and do something stupid.